If you have not seen my prior Epidemic Sound video, I do recommend that you go check that out because it has a lot of context that I will be drawing from today in regard to my own experiences with Epidemic Sound and in regard to what I'm currently experiencing and why this message today is relevant. Ah boy, here we go. As of 8.43 a.m. today, I did receive a message back from Epidemic Sound. I do want to state that they of their own volition seem to send this my way, which I will applaud on their part for reaching out and being proactive. However, this does feel like a slap in the face to me. This is after many, many inquiries sent through their official site, trying to report that customer service manager and their seeming inability to math and find the correct product, and most recently, while paying for their subscription service, still getting copyright claimed. Hence why I said I literally paid Epidemic Sound to get a copyright claim. So diving into the email, Hi again, Kip. I can confirm you don't have any active claims on your account and that your channels have been properly linked to your Epidemic Sound account. So this is good. This is good news, right? Well, I did link it since day one, and I don't understand why this is a talking point to begin with. I understand that they are confirming that yes, my accounts are linked properly, but I was already aware that I did link my accounts properly. I don't really see how this is a point of reassurance. If anything, this feels a little tone deaf. As far as no active claims on my account, Yes, while they did redact the claim on the Brandon Herrera Tokarev reaction, copyright claims are still legal action that they manually chose to file against me, as well as this last one being they chose to file it manually while paying for an active license. Generally, whenever I hear legal action being taken against somebody and that party issuing the legal action redacts that, even if they redact it, that still opens them up to being countered by the person they were trying to pursue legal action against them. I also want to state, once again, I did pay for their service, their subscription, their license. That did not stop them from manually looking at the situation and saying, yes, we are going to serve legal action against you because you are infringing on our copyright. This is saying under penalty of perjury, which you can look up via YouTube's copyright guidelines, under penalty of perjury, you must own the rights to the content to make this legal claim. Epidemic Sound effectively said, even with the license, you do not have legal claim to this. We are going to claim this from you. Just so we're clear on those points. The notification you received this week was a false claim. Interesting. This was made by a collecting society, not by us. What? Okay. Because we own the asset, our name is listed alongside the claimant, so it may appear that we have made the claim, although we had nothing to do with it. At a base level, if you own an asset, if you own an IP, if you own a copyright, you are responsible for that. If I was the head of a bank or a credit union and an employee that I had gave out personal identifying information to a scammer without getting them verified, I'm still on the hook for that potential identity theft that will happen because of that. To me, this sounds like you are admitting you own this asset, once again, without them providing any sort of proof or tangible documentation, and effectively washing their hands of it saying, well, we have no control over this. You claim to legally own this material. You claim to legally own this copyright. Not only are you manually issuing legal notice to me in the form of a copyright claim while paying for your service and your license, which your customer service manager did tell me to do, but now you're saying that someone else filed it on your behalf and that your name is tied to it. And while you own this, you're not responsible for this. That's not how that works. You are responsible for what you own. If I had a power tool company and I knew a specific series of tools had actual issues with it to the point of recalling it, I, as the owner, would be responsible for that power tool line. Whether it's issuing a recall, whether it's issuing reimbursement, whether it's contacting everybody. You signed up for this. You legally own this property. What is not clear about this? If someone or some entity is filing on your behalf and you are admittedly saying this is a false claim, does this not put you in hot water? You under penalty of perjury by YouTube's own policy and admittance in filing this manual claim, acknowledge that everything you said was true and that this was valid. Am I being clear enough for you, Epidemic Sound? If you have a look at the claim details, you will see two other names listed, including the collecting society in question. All I am concerned about is I have paid for an Epidemic Sound license. The copyright owners in question that show up to me in YouTube studio is Epidemic Sound Publishing. You've already admitted in this email that this is content that you own. Why is someone else issuing content claims, copyright claims, and potentially even copyright strikes on your behalf? Why would I have my buddy who does not have access to my channels issue a copyright claim on my behalf? Do you see how this doesn't make sense? How this just doesn't add up? The math ain't mathing. 
Their justification is this happens sometimes, unfortunately, because of the antiquated way YouTube's content ID is set up, where they favor collecting societies even when it's incorrect to do so. I am paying for your license. Multiple team members across Twitter and email and a customer service manager on behalf of Epidemic Sound said that this was the way to stop getting copyright claims. That if I wanted to address the issues of getting consistent copyright claims by Epidemic Sound, I must buy this license. I have bought this license. I have played this game. Now you're telling me that someone on your behalf, a collecting society, is able to make claims for you for your content without your consent or knowledge? There is something wrong there. If I hire an editor or I hire a manager or I hire someone to deal with Kizuna Kip as a brand, as anything, and they start making legal claims on my behalf without my knowledge, that is a problem. That is how you get fired. Yes, I have a mod team in my Discord and Twitch and YouTube. Every single one of those mods should be treated as if they were me. Because I know if a mod is going to action somebody, if they're going to ban someone, if they're going to do anything, they log that and they let me know. This is mind boggling that a company worth $1.4 billion USD seemingly doesn't have basic redundancy features or can't control their own IP. It is unlikely that this should happen again, but if this does, please dispute the claim right away. It should be automatically released within a matter of hours. We're constantly working with these organizations to prevent this from happening. So the way that you're supposed to deal with a situation like this, where you're actively paying for an Epidemic Sound license or subscription, and a claim is made against your content while under an active license or subscription, you're supposed to use this exact form and fill it out in a very specific way with the link to the offending video, and you send it off to them and they correct it allegedly within a number of hours. However, I also counter with this should not happen in the first place. I am paying you for a good. I am paying you for a service. I am paying you for a subscription. I am paying you for this license, which multiple of your staff legally on behalf of Epidemic Sound have said I need to purchase and this will not be an issue. You cannot sell me one thing and then instead go behind my back and say, oh, well, have you linked your accounts properly? When I have linked my accounts, I have done everything you have asked. If I am paying for a service and you choose to not deliver the service, we have an issue. Imagine paying for a service like Amazon Prime and say it will give you free shipping on XYZ. But when you get to checkout, suddenly you have to pay shipping. You see where the math ain't mathing? Do you see how that can be seen as disingenuous? I understand you haven't had the smoothest journey with us so far, and I'm sorry that this happened to understand your frustration. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Customer service, epidemic sound. Now, I have censored the reference ID. I have censored certain information across both videos out of respect, one out of privacy for me, but also privacy for epidemic sound. And I hope this illustrates that while I am frustrated, I don't have malicious intent here. I want to hold a company accountable for what they're saying and what they're doing. They are saying, buy this license, you will not have issues. I buy the license and clearly I get copyright claimed as well, but now I'm paying for the copyright claim. I have sent a number of message requests via their official contact form like they've told me to in this exact email. They have gone unanswered. Contextually, isn't it weird that the moment I post a video and bring receipts, that's when they reach out to me? When I'm not saying things like, don't buy their license, cancel this company, but instead I'm saying, take these things into account in your decision-making process if buying an Epidemic Sound license is right for you. To take into account all of these situations that I keep having to deal with and apply it to your own situation to see if it's financially feasible and if it's a smart decision. I will give Epidemic Sound credit in reaching out and being proactive. However, that does not dismiss the issues that I keep having with this company. That does not dismiss the number of interactions I've had, especially when a customer service manager does issue me the incorrect product and stands by that. This does not invalidate that once again, customer service manager says, if you don't want this to be an issue, merely get the license and I still experience issues. This does not dismiss that the only time I seem to get a response from them is when I make a video and I have sources and citations and showcase, hey, this is what's going on. This is unacceptable. And now I'm getting told that they acknowledge in their own words via this epidemic sound email that this is in fact a false claim. Perjury, the offense of willfully telling an untruth in a court after having taken an oath or affirmation. Epidemic sound, under penalty of perjury, says that any claim that they are submitting is valid. 
that to the best of their knowledge, everything is true. When in fact, they acknowledge that all my accounts are linked correctly. They know I have an active subscription. They acknowledge I haven't had the smoothest journey so far with them. So I'm kind of just sitting here scratching my head at this point. The prior video and this video will still remain up. This is a good first step in them trying to do better, in trying to garner goodwill. However, my experiences with this company are still my experiences with this company. I also want to clarify, my issue is with the company. The person having to write this email is probably a lovely person. They're probably just trying to do their job. I clarify this because on the internet, there's a vast misconception that if you're after a company, you're also after the workers as well. This is not the case. The only reason I harp on this manager as much as I am is because I think they need some re-education in some company policies and procedures, some customer service etiquette, and as somebody that effectively aced a financial manager test, I don't have sympathy for managers that do stuff like this. I do stand by my statement. If you are looking at getting an epidemic sound license, if you are looking at buying their subscription service, take all of this into consideration, do your research, and come to your best educated decision. This is not me slagging off their product. This is not me calling for legal action against them. This is not me slandering their product or otherwise saying to just avoid them. I am presenting my personal experience in a way that is easily digestible so that you may make your best educated decision on if you should go through with this or not. I was actually gonna take the day off, but honestly, I felt that I shouldn't leave this as a community post, that I should make a proper video about this in the proper follow-up fashion. And I hope this speaks towards my integrity as a person. I hope this speaks that I'm not just trying to get drama clickbait. I hope that I come across as trying to be the difference, to not go after somebody, but hold them accountable for what they're saying and what they have sold me on. If you have someone that you know that is currently looking at Get an Epidemic Sound, I do recommend that you share not only my videos, but other videos as well. That way they can make the best information decision on what they want to do or not. I once again want to extend my gratitude to the employee that is having to write this on behalf of this manager who I don't see anywhere in sight. I once again want to express my gratitude that they at least reached out to me, but this is the first step in a long series of events to even remotely mend this. I do feel that it is asinine that if I'm paying for a service that I have to reach out to you to correct your mistake. That is going to be all for this one. Let me know if I'm on base, off base. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section. I know people have said get a hold of some ordinary gamers, Mudahar in regards to this. In my personal opinion, he has a lot better things that he can cover if someone wants to throw this his way cool. If somebody also wants to react to this, not opposed to that either. I'm just doing what I can every single day and I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for watching. Really do appreciate it. See you all in the next one.